What's up you guys, it's Susie from HeyGrillHey.com and today we are cooking up some salmon. Now a couple weeks ago I showed you my recipe for my favorite salmon seasoning, cook some salmon on the pellet grill and I had some comments from you saying, you know, I don't have a pellet grill, what could I do to bring some smoky flavor on my gas grill? So today we are doing this super delicious salmon on a cedar plank with a scratch made mango salsa. It is delicious, you're gonna love it. Let's get started. I've got a beautiful filet, this is a wild caught salmon, about a pound and a half, and we've got our salmon seasoning. Now this is a recipe that I just recently shared with you guys. It is a brown sugar based seasoning, it has basil and lime, and it's absolutely delicious. We're just gonna coat our salmon filet liberally across the top. Once you have the seasoning on there, just lightly spread it out with your fingers, and then, one thing that I like to do if I have the time is wrap this filet up in a little bit of plastic wrap, nice and tight, and then refrigerate it overnight. This is kind of going to like fake cure the salmon a little bit. It's really gonna act like a marinade. All of the flavors from the brown sugar seasoning are gonna sink into that fish filet and it's going to be super duper flavorful. So this can go into the fridge for about eight hours, and then we can cook it. I've got my gas grill preheating to about medium high heat, 375 degrees. For me on this gas grill, that usually means my burners are about three quarters of the way to high, and that'll hit me around 375. Our salmon filet has been soaking in the beautiful seasoning. We'll take that out so you can take a look at it. Dun, dun, dun. You can see all the brown sugar has really dissolved and it looks fantastic. <laughs> Next we need to talk about our cedar plank. Now I have a regular old size cedar plank here. It's been soaking in a shallow pan in water for the last couple of hours. What this is going to do is prevent this uh, cedar plank from scorching too much while it's on the grill. What we really want to do is use this cedar plank for a nice woodsy, smoky flavor. Since we're cooking this on a gas grill, we're not getting in any additional wood flavor from a smoker or a smoke tube. This is going to give us that wood kissed flavor that we're looking for. But soaking it is important so that you don't have a massive fire. <laughs> so I'm just going to take my salmon filet, place it skin side down on the cedar plank. a perfect fit. Look at that. Beautiful. Yeah. Our grill is right up to temperature. So we're going to take our cedar plank salmon and we're going to pop it directly over the heat. The cedar plank does a couple of things here. It's going to flavor the salmon with that wood flavor like we talked about, but it's also going to insulate the salmon. So we don't have to worry about the skin sticking to the grates and it's going to give us a more even cook from the top to the bottom. One thing that really sets this salmon apart is this fresh mango salsa that we're gonna put on top. Uh, we're gonna be utilizing the grill for part of the salsa as well, and that is to roast this bell pepper. So we're just gonna drizzle the bell pepper with about a teaspoon of cooking oil and then pop it directly over the high heat. I'm just gonna do this in a gallon bag because it makes it easy to get that oil all the way around the bell pepper, and then we'll be using this bag again in a couple minutes. So shiny. Yeah. I just wanted to play with my little blowtorch. <laughs> that was just that was just for fun. <laughs> Whether by grill or by, uh, 
blowtorch. Once your bell pepper is blistered and blackened all the way around, go ahead and pop it back into your zip top bag. Zip it about 80% of the way closed, and then just let it sit and start to cool off for two to three minutes. The heat from the bell pepper is going to soften the meat and the skin that's all blistered is going to start to pull away. It'll make it a lot easier for us to get all of that burned skin off and then have beautiful roasted red bell peppers to slice and put in our mango salsa. Once your pepper has cooled slightly, you can just run your fingers through the bag onto the pepper and actually just scrape off that blistered skin. You don't have to get all of the skin off perfectly. A little bit of that char left behind is good for the flavor, but you wanna get most of it, at least separated from the pepper. When you came here for a salmon recipe, I bet you didn't know you'd be getting a roasted bell pepper recipe also. Bonus. I had to check on the salmon because I could smell the cedar wood. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't actually on fire. It's not, but I'm catching all of that like roasty, wood, smoky deliciousness happening. It looks so good. Our bell pepper is mostly cleaned. I'm just gonna pop it onto a paper towel to get any of that you know, residual skin that I don't want on there. From there, it's just chopping it into a medium dice. So far away. Where are you going? We're gonna add our diced bell pepper to one large mango that has been diced about the same size as the bell pepper, a quarter cup of minced cilantro, and then the juice of one lime. And that is it. Super simple mango salsa. And it's gonna go right on top of our finished salmon. Do you know a trick that my sister just showed me? My sister has a food blog. She's smarter than me about regular cooking stuff. But she took her tongs and she took her lemon and she squoze it like this instead of using her hands. It's actually kind of genius. I've never done that before. Thanks, uh, Sarah. You guys can find her at Feeding Your Fam for more great family cooking tips and reps, 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 recipes. Rest. That's actually really cool. I've never done that before. I always have tongs laying around also. Cool tips. Follow me for more recipes. This is super delish all on its own, but if you wanted to zhuzh it up with a little bit more punch, you could add in some thinly sliced red onions, salt, cracked black pepper. You could even put some jalapenos in there or some habanero if you wanted a little bit of kick of some spice. But this is going to feed my children, so I'm keeping it a little bit simple, a little bit mild today. Perfect, look at that. The salmon is perfectly done, right about 145 degrees Fahrenheit. It's exactly where we want salmon to be. It'll make sure it's really juicy still. You don't want dry salmon. Now you can serve your salmon with the mango salsa on the side, but I actually like to spoon some of that mango salsa right over the top and let those roasted bell peppers and that fresh squeezed lime juice kind of drizzle its way down over the meat and into all those yummy salmon nooks and crannies. And that is it, you guys. This is incredibly simple, very healthy, very flavorful. And I feel like even the pickiest of people who maybe say they don't love salmon end up loving this salmon because it's just sweet and fresh and delicious. And now I have to taste it because I've been talking about it and it's driving me nuts. <laughs> Got some of the mango, some of that bell pepper some of the crispy edges of the salmon that were up against the edge of that cedar plank. So I know they're gonna have that really strong cedar plank flavor. Mm. Dude, there is no better combo than fresh fish and fresh fruit. 
It's sweet, it's tangy, it's totally bright. You guys are going to love this one. I have a feeling your whole family is gonna love this one. I hope you give it a try at home. If you do, snap a photo, upload it online, use the hashtag HeyGirlHey, that way I can see it and cheer you on on your journey to becoming a backyard barbecue hero. See you next time.